Well, hey guys, John G back again. This is installment three of my water feature design series, educating you about water in motion. Today's video is all about proper design of a pondless waterfall and understanding how to calculate your reservoir size and how water in motion relates to pondless waterfall design. I'm gonna try to keep it quick because the content is important as it could be, but it sure as heck isn't very exciting. So let's get busy. First thing I'm gonna tell you is, during your design, I want you to understand, this is an aqua block right here. This guy holds about 32 gallons of water. Doesn't look like much, but that box right there, when properly installed, can hold over two and a half tons of weight per square foot on top of it. This is one of the key components of our Palmas Waterfall Reservoir. On top of that, we use aggregate. You can see that I've got right here, also known as gravel. Different sizes of aggregate hold different amounts of water. I want you to understand this block, a large aqua block, holds 32 gallons of water. The same amount of given space of gravel holds about one third of the volume of water per space because it is displaced by the gravel. Obviously, the smaller the gravel gets, the more water it displaces. The bigger the, the inner spaces are between the gravels, the more water it'll hold. Let me show you a little example. Just so happens I have a bucket of water right here. This is a two gallon bucket. This is a five gallon bucket full of gravel. Watch this. I could get some of it actually in the bucket. There it is, I still got water. All right, so points proved. Two gallons takes up five gallons of space but only holds two gallons of water. Now you got that. I'm gonna need that bucket again, but I like throwing stuff out the side of the screen because it's cool. Anyways, so you understand that now. So when you're designing your reservoir, first of all, figure out how much water you need. If you don't understand how to calculate water in motion, I'll put a link up there. Watch that video first, come back to this. So I'm not gonna teach you how to figure out how much water you have in motion in your pond and waterfall. We've already covered that. What I'm gonna teach you is, how to design the right size reservoir so that it works properly. Let's think about this. So let me tell you, let me talk to you about what it means to have a top heavy water feature. Guys, I like to run my pondless waterfall with 50% water in the reservoir. That way, when you turn the power off, the water in motion can go back and your reservoir captures all the water in motion. So if I do an auto filler or anything in the reservoir, I never fill it up fuller than halfway because you wanna capture the water in motion. If your feature is top heavy and your reservoir is half full and you have too much water moving, let me show you what you're asking your reservoir to do. I got my socks wet just to prove a point, okay? That's what happens. Now, your reservoir is full, your flower bed's a mess, and when you plug the feature back in, let me show you what you're asking. This is your water in motion. Do you, you get, get what, what I'm saying? saying? Doesn't, Doesn't work. work. Now you would think that what I'm saying right now is absolutely ridiculous, but I run into this all the time. People build this reservoir and they attach that water in motion. You have to design the right size reservoir for the amount of water in motion. Figure out how long your stream is. Use the calculations from video number one then design your reservoir accordingly. So if you figure out that you have 150 gallons of water in motion, you're gonna design your water to be two to three times that much in the reservoir. That would be between 300, 450 gallons. The first thing you wanna do is just fill that double number with your aqua blocks. So 150 in motion, say you wanna do 300 gallons of water, do that in the aqua blocks. That's about 10 aqua blocks. Boom, I just designed my reservoir. It's gonna be 10 aqua blocks. Then understand the amount of gravel that's on top. When you figure out the water that's in that space, divide that by a third because two thirds of that's gonna be displaced by your gravel. Now you know how much water's in your reservoir. Now you understand how the feature works properly. You don't design your waterfall top heavy. Don't be a minimalist and try to cheap on your materials by building your reservoir too small. Make sure that you over deliver what's buried in the ground. That's what's gonna keep your feature functioning properly, working good. It's gonna make you look like a hero and not a zero. Guys, that's all I gotta say. That's the end of this video. I told you, fast and furious. Do me a favor, if you learned something about Palmas Waterfall Design, 
give me a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, tell me that you liked it, com communicate, comment, all that stuff right down there in the section below. If you're tired of my mathematics, I keep telling you, follow my boys on Facebook. They are just a faster, smarter, younger, better looking version of me. I know that's hard to imagine, but it's true. I'm out.